this another Sunday, we've been very concerned about the lack of people on the streets evangelizing. Please, please. I know many of you believe that some people have got special gift for evangelism. Now, you have to know the condition in the UK. The Christians in Canada are facing their own challenges. They are rising up against the works of the devil that is infiltrating into their country. We, the believers in the UK, we are too slack. We are looking at the devil taking territory in this country. When blatantly there is a war, spiritual war between the powers of darkness and the church over souls. What we are talking to you now has to do with souls. Okay? Satan is doing his worst to sweep as many as he can into destruction. We cannot sit down and shut our mouth when the Holy Spirit needs us, Jesus himself needs us, and angels are all on our side to go on the street and redeem lives. This is so serious. The reason why many of you cannot do it is because the devil is intimidating you. He's giving you excuses to make you believe that you are not part of those who should be evangelized. If you are a child of God, you are a Christian, you have received the Holy Spirit baptism, there is no way you should not be evangelizing. There is war, spiritual war. The devil is using every avenue to win the battle. We should not allow him to win. All authority has been given to us by the Lord. Okay? So we are in a battle warfare over souls. The souls, the ignorant souls over there. There is a battle over their life. And we are the sons of God that has to manifest on the street corner at the playground. I like the 200 pastors and the other believers in Canada that are rising against that wickedness that is happening in their country. What are we doing in the United Kingdom? What are you doing in your country? Jesus said to us, we should go into the word and preach the gospel to every creature. Have you done your part? Have you done? We are singing. We are dancing. We are doing concerts. We are doing musical shows. Why is the souls are dying? How is our entertainment in the church helping them? Please. Our hearts are heavy. This afternoon, we've had church service, we've, we've talked, we have risen, but we are calling on every believer, every church, every pastor in the United Kingdom. It doesn't matter the size of your church. Please wake up. Wake up and begin to do something. We are calling on you like Mordecai called on Esther. Don't keep your mouth shut and mind your business. You have your church members. You have a small church or a bigger church, over 50 people and something. So you think it's all right. It is not all right. What is going on in the United Kingdom? Darkness is fast taking territories. So please, we challenge all of you. We will pray with you, but we, we challenge all believers. Anyone in the United Kingdom that calls yourself a Christian, don't watch from a distance. We should flood the streets. We should flood the recreational areas. 
we should be we have man every day even if you go to work monday to friday you have the weekends can't you take one hour two hours in a week come on the street go somewhere find some people and share the faith with you. please we are pleading with all of you those of us few on the streets cannot do all the work now what you also have to know is there is a strategy the enemy is using in this country there are lots of people who are hiding behind charities and they are not using the charity to touch life i ministered to someone who was crying said he works with this church i don't want to mention name and they do charitable thing feed the homeless clothe them and everything but they don't witness to them they only feed them no witnessing and they've been doing it for the past 20 years they have never won one of them i literally met some of these homeless people who told me they go there to eat bath and shower but they are not believers and they've been going there for 10 years so why what exactly are these people doing this for what's the reason they are doing it where is the outcome where is the impact if you cannot share jesus and you are doing this in the name of a church come on something is wrong the charitable thing should open the heart of the people to receive the gospel but if we can feed them their flesh and we cannot minister the gospel to them then we are filled in the first place so if you are listening to us and you are a christian please don't bow your head open your heart let the holy spirit touch you please we need people on the street even if you cannot come i tell, i will say if you cannot come sponsor us we have no sponsorship from anywhere nobody is sponsoring us is the love of god we are living look at the time we are living in. if you look at the vision of nebuchadnezzar and the vision of daniel we are at the foot aspect of that multi-metallic image at the foot we are living in a great period. only one or two things need to happen before the lord will come i don't want to get more theological but this is the time now is the time every christian if you have gone dormant please you have nothing to lose coming out but you have everything to lose if you stay where you are staying there are people over there you know more than we know you can evangelize better than we are please no more hiding break come come out like esther hadassah and let's go all out if we die we die hallelujah My brother Joe. praise the lord um we were discussing a lot of things today and um <laughs> i don't even know where to begin um but one thing is uh we come to jesus christ we get saved we get filled with the holy spirit we go to church and then we get taught the word of god and then we just do nothing about it but the same way when we go to school we get educated um, then we get uh, a certificate we don't just keep the certificate we go out and find a job you know so the same matter we, we go to church we learn and we have received the certificate which is the Holy Spirit and we don't do nothing with what the Holy Spirit has given us and the Bible says he gives gifts unto men it gives some uh, apostles prophets evangelists pastors and teachers and the Bible says where is it now for the equipment of the saints for of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying for the edifying of the body of christ till we all come to the unity of the faith 
and of the knowledge of the Son of God to perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Now, when the apostle, the pastor, the prophet, the teacher, the evangelist, they come together to equip us, we don't just get equipped to do nothing with what we've been taught. We we get equipped so that we can go out and make what? Fishes of men. So we cast our net into the sea, which is the marketplace or the university or the school or the highways and the byways, and we take the net out and we see what we have caught like one time um the the disciples were um fishing all day long oh my god they didn't get nothing they didn't get nothing but one day when jesus came he says throw your net into the sea they said oh but we've taught we've taught all day long we've got nothing and then they just obeyed and guess what they got a multitude of fish even the net broke and Jesus Christ says, today I'll make you fishes of men. My, my brothers and my sisters, God has given us a mandate to win souls. It is the heartbeat of God. It is not, yes, we see the office of the evangelist, but the Bible also says, do the work of the evangelist. My God. One person, Philip, turned the city of Samaria upside down. And we know that Samaria is a city of God's. Mm. So imagine this, there's principalities and powers in that city, but one man mm. baptized by the fire of the Holy Ghost turned that city upside down and we have the Spirit of God living inside of us. So many times we go out on the streets and we, I'm telling you, we experience fear. Mm. But what happens that every single time I go out and I... I, do you know, I just wait a little bit and I begin to pray. Mando reba sotore kandalabaha le bando reba sotore. Yeah, you take authority in that place. It says, stir up your most holy faith, praying in the spirit in Jude, and and we gotta stir up the fire. We gotta. It's like a you know washing machine. Washing machine, you have to turn it on, and when you turn it on, what happens? It spins. So you. Activate your inner man. You you pump the fire. You pump it. You pump it until you experience the presence of God. So one time, well, not one time, but most times when, when I just before I go to evangelism, when I just get into my bathroom, shut the door. I pray. I worship until God's presence invades that place. So the 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 the, the, the spiritual becomes tangible and i go out and when i go out do you know what sometimes i don't even see what's happening but atmosphere is being shifted in that place you see one by one people standing boom, 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 boom. even little kid a little child that you know the funniest thing a little child sometimes is it muslims and, and they will try to drag out kids <laughs> they'll try so, and the kids so would be they, like they, they don't want them to listen because yes. they could see the impact mm -hmm. the effect is drawing the children's attention that's right and then and then the kid will be no and then the the parents have to stand there by force and listen to the gospel so i'm telling you we need to overcome fear we need to overcome this thing oh it's just about uh, church sunday service no we are in church to get equipped and go out in the highways and the byways to tell somebody about Jesus. Your testimony alone, if we, even if you don't know what to say, Jesus Christ has done something for you. Whether he has provided for you, that is a testimony. Whether he's giving you a job, that is a testimony. Why? Because somebody needs to know that Jesus is a provider. Somebody needs to know that Jesus is a healer. Somebody needs to know that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And he's more than able to do the impossible. We're speaking about a God who does the impossible. Mm -hmm. The Bible says he walked upon the sea. He walked upon he the brought, sea. He, oh, he yeah, walked but upon it, the listen, sea. Listen, Jesus walking upon the sea honestly it's a miracle but mm. for me knowing the god we serve mm. that is nothing mm. he said if jesus walk on the sea mm -mm -mm. Mama, it's not impossible for him mm. because 
he oh listen he holds the whole world in his hands my, my, my. so walking on the sea is 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 casual hey. beloved now you look what is the greatest miracle in the bible you talk about it what's the greatest miracle you can talk about it? raise it and i will tell you the god we serve the god who said spoke the, the whole land we are walking on and building houses and the, he spoke it out of water and he came floating and he's holding all of us he placed the earth and gave it a pathway to follow look at this earth we are all living on it floating in the middle of nowhere that's the god we say what is your fear are you telling me your fear is stronger than the terror of god Do you know what it, it, it means for someone to be separated from God perpetually? Every sinner that dies without Jesus, they will spend eternity alive from the presence of God. You as a Christian, look at when sin comes into your life, how you feel, just sin comes into your Christian life, how you feel. Can you imagine feeling that the rest of eternity alienated from the presence of God? Very soon, the third rapture will happen. The, sorry, I said third rapture then resurrection will happen first one happened when jesus rose and then all the saints that died before jesus including the sinner on the cross all rose with him according to the book of matthew very soon third resurrection will happen rapture and then the two witnesses will come but before the two witnesses come it is our time this is your time if you are listening to us and you are a pastor, you are a prophet, you are a church member, please, you don't need any school, you don't need any education to come and share your faith with others. The world is the way it is today because we Christians refuse to engage Satan. Please, please, one more time, we are calling on you. Come out from your hiding place. Even if you don't know how to evangelize, find some brothers and sisters. Go and shadow them. Go and share tracks for them. Don't keep your mouth shut. Don't die a Christian without sharing your faith. Jesus didn't tell us to leave as Christians and then when they see the way we live, they become Christians. He said we should go and preach and tell them. So we are challenging all of you. Christians in United Kingdom, let's do what the Canadian preachers are doing. They're standing against what they call sozi or something. Wrong teachings. Now, can you imagine if our presence is on the streets constantly? Every church, you are on the streets. Every church, every week, we are on the streets evangelizing. Can you imagine what will become of this country? Other generations have let us down. But may we not let our generation down. Heaven is counting on you. Like Mordecai, we are telling you, 
if you keep your mouth shut those of you who have shut your mouth and you are not you are afraid the spirit of god is not a spirit of fear remember god has not given you the spirit of fear so you have no excuse to fear if you have the holy spirit i don't know what you were told when you receive the holy spirit i don't know where you were what you were told about tongue speaking but if you are speaking tongues like i'm speaking that gift is to prime you to energize you to make you get power to do the impossible oh yes if you keep your mouth shut go somehow some way will find people to do the work but you will be the one who will lose mm. please the young people please we were preached the church was preached into where we are now this backslidingness of the church we were preaching to it but we our generation we want to come back to what we should be doing so all young people over there if you are hearing this and you don't know what to do but the holy spirit has touched your heart and you also want to start doing something give us a call i will put my phone number and evangelist joe's number over there you can get in touch with any one of us if you are in the northern area get in touch with him if you are in central london and london area get in touch with me and let's go together we are going to rescue the perishing rescue jesus said go to the byways and highways there is abundance chairs tables tables already prepared angels are ready to serve us you know the chef in heaven they are angels the dining table is set heaven has so much room please don't go to heaven alone if you are going to heaven please don't go alone go with some people and you know the souls you witness to they will be your invited guests you will go with don't go to heaven alone that's all i will tell you i don't know if you want to say something before we pray for our uh, i think just talk about the um the, the rich man and the poor man the, 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 the lazarus and the yes poor. Um, you know that story breaks yeah. my heart it really breaks my heart mm. so I mean if you look at that if you look at that story again Jesus was telling us what happens beyond the graves okay that rich man didn't go to hell because of riches no he went there because he refused to hear the gospel and that was what he was told but if you look at it this rich man was seen Abraham and Lazarus in joy and happiness. Meanwhile, where he was, it's a different story. And they could see him. Now, that aspect, that part has been taken from there. Mm -hmm. But do you know that even when everything is said, the Bible said that even those who will end up in hell, occasionally we will go and see them, we can see them. And can you bear you have relations probably who might not be christians who have died and gone already and some are still alive can you imagine these people we walk past on the street to walk with they will spend eternity away from god in total destruction how wicked can we be do you know how god feels do we want god to talk to us like he talked to job is jonah jonah was only consecrating on himself selfish prophet despite everything god made he was still not happy he would that the people rather die god said do you know the value of a soul the value of a soul is the price of Jesus' blood. <coughs> I, I, I think it was in the year 2000. 
12. I was, I was in church and we were in the foyer and we were praying. I was leading prayers and I, I saw it like a, a TV, a movie. You see like your cinema, you see there's a movie. And I was taken to the gates of heaven and I was standing there and I could see a long line of people. They were dressed in different garments. One was white, one had white with stains on them other people had black garments on and the angel of the Lord had the book in his hands and one by one he was ticking and the people that had white garments on they went through the gates the people that had white garments with stains on they went to the back of the line and the people that had black garments on they were kicked into hell I started feeling this kind of mm, and it's kind of I just it's like you're about to cry and mixed emotions and you don't even know how to pray and that is when I began to understand that there's an urgency for heaven that will go out in the highways and the byways to snatch people out of hell like there was a report it's like is it every two seconds or something people are dying like one, two, dead. One, two, dead. One, two, dead. Imagine how many people are going to hell. It is serious. And I don't think people, especially Christians, understand the seriousness of it. Eternity in hell. 24 7. 24 7. Being tormented. Being in the fire. Torment. Your soul is burning every single day. No escape, no second chance. It's either heaven or hell. The two destinations and the place where God has called us to be is in Him, with Him, in heaven for eternity. And the devil is already judged. That's the place he will be for eternity. And he's doing every single thing to take people with him. So we must, we must, can I say that again? We must be encouraged. We must press on. We must build our faith to snatch people out of the grips of the devil. Mm. The Bible says he comes to kill still and to destroy. But Jesus has come to give life and life more abundantly. Not just on this earth, but in a heaven. And, and it, by, the Bible says there shall be a new Jerusalem. My God. There was one time I, I began to have this vision of the new city. And I'm telling you, I was, it was like I was flying in the air. And the more I began to fly, I saw rivers and uh, water and mountains and hills. That is, it's so be uh, um, beautiful. And I was above the clouds. And the more I was flying up, I could see a, a, a glass, like glass buildings, like sparkling glass. And it made me to understand that this earth that we see is nothing compared to what God has in store for us. This word is my God. You see, listen, when he was talking, he said something. He said the devil is already judged. No hope for him. Mm. So you should understand what he's doing. Mm. He's already condemned. Mm. So a condemned spirit, what do you expect from him? Mm. He's only doing what he he knows best. But look at these poor souls. Have we understood the scripture? The word of God says in Luke 15, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repent. Do you know why there is joy? They know the value of a soul. Angels, they know the value of a soul. Do we know the value of a soul? Beloved, we will leave you over here with prayer. It's too much for me to be talking to you about what is going on. I don't know what country you are living in. But the people of Sodom were bragging, they were laughing, 
they were raping mm. they were doing all kinds of things and when god brought the fire nobody escaped mm. the lord has told us that everything in our days will continue normal we'll be going to work he won't serve us no notice weddings is going on normal life mm. suddenly suddenly hmm. one of these days it will be and we are gone mm. how are you going to appear before god Please think like, about what we are telling us. Like the, uh, I was reminded of the, the ten virgins. Yeah. Remember the ten virgins that five of them, the Bible says, were foolish. Mm. They did not uh, trim their lights. Mm. And the other, ten, uh, the other five, the other five. had um, extra oil. Mm. And when it was time, there was a sound. Ding, 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 ding. The bridegroom cometh. But the foolish virgins didn't have extra oil. Mm. Guess they are what? not vigilant. Mm -mm. It talks about being vigilant. Mm. Simply, they were not prepared. Yes, that's right. They were not prepared. They had invitations. Mm. They want to go, but they didn't prepare. Mm. So, the event came on, but they missed. Mm. Are you prepared for heaven? Mm. You, yourself, are we prepared? If you are prepared, you make provision. Whatever, if you are chasing job, you are chasing business, whatever you are chasing in this world, you have to know that you are not taking it with you. Everything we have over here, we will leave it over here. When you leave it, what are you going, when you appear in heaven, what are you going with? Because Jesus has told us that even though we leave everything over here, there are still things over here we can translate into the kingdom of God to wait for us over there. And one of those things are souls. Remember, the scripture says, he who wins a soul is wise. So Daniel was telling us, it means Daniel himself is a soul winner. Mm -hmm. An Old Testament prophet is telling us, he who wins a soul is wise. If you are not wise, you are otherwise. And I don't think any one of us is otherwise. Mm. Please, one more time, like Mordecai, we are pleading with you like Mordecai pleaded with Esther. Esther, don't think you are safe. Don't think because you are in the kingdom, you are safe. If you don't rise up, God will raise a deliverer. God will raise people to reach those lost souls. But you are the one who lose. Please don't harden your heart. Don't just go to church. This is the purpose of which we are in this world. We have been left over here to reach the lost. I have nothing more to say. If Joe has something to say, he will finish and will pray with you. Those of you who really want to repent and begin to do something, now is the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just, we so, we, I, I, I believe we have spoken a lot and we just want to encourage you that you shouldn't fear. Don't be intimidated by the, the spirit of fear, the spirit of intimidation, the spirit of shyness. Let the Holy Spirit use you. The Holy Spirit is there to empower you to be witnesses, to preach the gospel. That is the power of God that will save lives, that will heal the liver, and so much more. You're here to represent the kingdom. The kingdom is within you. And it will, and it will come out for many to know that Jesus Christ is with you. And when Jesus Christ walked among us, he showed compassion to sinners. The blind saw, the cripple could walk, 
the leprosy were healed even creative miracles happened the dead came back to life and it's as great of things than this shall you do the bible says when jesus christ died on the cross and he rose again on the third day the bible says he did far greater miracles signs and wonders that the bible cannot even contain and the the bible is enough for us the word is enough for us i'm telling you my brothers and my sisters the word of god is living this word is living and when you hold on to this word it shall go forth and it shall accomplish it shall produce results and you gotta testify of what jesus christ has done in your life mm. jesus has done something it may not be as big as you see it to be but let me tell you something there is somebody waiting for you there is somebody waiting for you to open up your mouth and tell them something tell them something tell them what jesus christ has done because i remember the days when i was so addicted to pornography i couldn't give it up i remember the days when i used to be a homosexual and i was looking for loving men and i faced so much rejection in life i remember those days let me tell you something jesus christ will set you free and i speak that word why because jesus christ has done it for me you may not have the same testimony as me but jesus christ has done something in your life you got to speak forth the word the word of god the word of god the word of god the bible says faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of god somebody's got to hear how would they know unless the gospel is preached how would they understand you gotta open up your mouth in faith you gotta the bible says he that cometh to god must first believe that he is and he's the rewarder to them that dealing to seek him and as you seek the face of the living god he will speak to you when you spend time in god's presence that is where you have an encounter with him face to face i remember the days when i was in uni uh, when we have the two hours break i will go home and i will pray 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 and seek the face of god and i'll go back to uni there were days i'll wake up 12 midnight or 3 a.m or 5 a.m in the morning just to seek the face of the lord it is time to seek the face of the lord because there is where power lies there is where he begins to reveal the mysteries of the kingdom to you it is not just about church there is more to god there is more to god my brothers and my sisters and that is why our hearts are burning our hearts are burning because the lord is calling the lord is calling the lord is calling somebody he says where is there somebody on this earth is there somebody on this earth that would do my will he's looking he's looking and he's searching god is looking into the world and he's saying where is my creation where is my creation that will speak off my word and take on take back the harvest back home god is looking mm. god is looking and we're here appealing to you today mm. we're appealing to you step out step out and preach the gospel of jesus christ for he's coming back again he is coming soon he comes like the thief and the night he is coming he is coming he is coming it is not about church the bible says the same spirit that all jesus from the grave lives within us he went and he said it's so important that i go and i'll say the spirit and the spirit is here he lives within us my god rabba soto he lives within us the bible says the waited at the day of pentecost and it came and sound as a mighty rushing wind and he sat on people's tongues of fire let me tell you something we don't just speak we don't just speak it but we get empowered by the spirit of god to step out in that place we take in territories we're shutting the kingdom of darkness down glory be to god we're here to occupy until the coming of jesus christ you better register yourself for heaven you gotta register yourself for eternity and you gotta bring people along with you you gotta bring people along with you don't be selfish no 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 it is not just about me myself and i know it is about soul soul souls it is the heart beat of god it is pumping like you can hear your 
heart is beating. God's heart is beating. God's heart is crying in his last days. Mm, his heart beat is crying out. My God. Beloved, you know, it is not us who is challenging you by the Spirit of God. My, my, my. I don't want to talk because the way I feel in the inside, I don't want to cry in front of this camera. Time is short. Time is short. Time is short. Time is short. God, like he confronted, he went to Abraham. Abraham, I am hearing something in Sodom. Mm. If I go according to what I'm hearing, if I don't get any man to stop me, I will destroy Sodom. Beloved, something is pulling heaven to come down. Mm. You may not be hearing it, but I'm hearing it in my spirit. Heaven is being cried upon to come down quickly. And should heaven come down, so many people will be destroyed. Look at the life that have, have been lost in Yugoslavia. How many of them are believers? We are dealing with a condemned spirit being called Satan. It's already the doom with all his demons. And all we do is to, as we are talking now, you are, you are, you, you are in the church. You are empty. You know you are empty. You know you are lost in transit. You don't know what to do anymore. You, you, you are in the church and you are feeling empty Sunday after Sunday. And you are trying to find out what you can use to replace that emptiness. When was the last time? You evangelize to someone. You told somebody about the love of God. When was the last time you went off your way? You took a day out of the week to go and look for the lost. This is what we are saying. Whether the ministry you are in does it or not, you have a mandate. You have a mandate to do it. We are not condemning you. We want to pray with you. We want to pray with you. Now is the time to do it. A time will come. Only two witnesses will be sent from heaven to come and do it. Yeah. And they will also be killed. But until those two witnesses come, we are the ones. Yes. We are the ones heaven is counting on. We are the ones heaven is working with. God is in partnership with us. There is a part he has to play. There is a part we have to play. We are the ones on the ground. And if those of us on the ground are not doing, what can heaven do? He is calling Muslims and other religions. Everybody has been doing it. The only people who are not doing it very well are the very people the gospel has been entrusted into our hands. You remember the warning Jesus gave, warned the disciples, don't keep the gospel like the Sahindri and the Sadducees and the Pharisees were doing. Don't do it. Share. Are we sharing? Let's pray. Father, in the name of your son Jesus, we commit all our listeners into your hands. Father, those whose heart you have touched through this message, those who are saying we are willing to do it but we don't know how to do it father somehow some way stir them up holy spirit you are the teacher you are the coach you are the one who speaks through us you are the one who directs us you are the one who gives us the boldness to do it give them that boldness and coach them and release them protect them and guide them and let your voice be heard in every nation, every culture, every throne, and every nationality. Raise a new breed of believers. 
who will never sit down until they have evangelized. Father, change the atmosphere. Bring us back to the ways of evangelism. And let Father salvation sweep the nations. Let the harvest be gathered in before you come. We thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. Joe, you can pray for them. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we activate the gifts of the Holy Spirit in your life right now. In the name of Jesus, faith, wisdom, healing, prophecy, interpretation of tongues, uh, diversity of tongues, um, discernments, big night right now. Knowledge big night right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Touch lives right now in the name of Jesus. Yes. Lord. That they'll step out of the four walls of the church and they'll speak to somebody about yes. your love, yes. about your goodness, about your salvation, yes. about your freedom. In the name of Jesus, Amen. that those speak forth uh, the word that comes from the kingdom. Yes. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, yes, touch lives right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, Father, we give you praise. We cancel every spirit uh, of fear, of intimidation right now. Yes. We break that chain. We break the mindset in the name of Jesus. Yes. Every cloud on your head mm -hmm. be removed now yes, in the name of jesus yes, every dark cloud we command it to be removed and yes, we declare sir. the peace of the lord mm -hmm. the mind of christ yes, over sir. your mind right now in the name of yes, jesus mm -hmm. because who the son sets free yes, is free mm -hmm. indeed yes, glory be to god yes, in jesus mighty name we pray tongues given amen amen so, beloved, if you said you don't know how to start, get in touch with us. You can get in touch with us. Just send us a message and we'll get in touch with you. The Lord bless all of you. We hope to see you soon on the streets, on the parks, at the shopping malls, wherever you will start. 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 Don't sit down. Start. And you see what the Lord will do because the Lord has gone ahead already. Amen. The Lord bless all of you.